right, guys, it's Nils again. A um, couple last points about uh, implementing the system. A uh, couple of things that I run into that can go wrong. Uh, or, you know, the stuff to watch out for. Um, obviously, it's like uh, I'm using this as I'm playing guitar at the same time. So I'm pressing buttons, I'm, I'm paying attention to something else in addition to what I'm doing. So it, 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 it takes extra practice. It is uh, uh, not something you want to just uh, throw in there that you've never done before. You want to practice with it a little bit, practice at home, uh, practice at rehearsal. Uh, make sure everybody's comfortable with it. Um, make sure the drummer counts in. I had that happen, that the drummer just starts playing, forgets to count in the band. Um, but most likely, um, you know, errors happen when you press the wrong button. It happened to me several times. Uh, you know, instead of advancing the loop to the next uh, region, um, it just I just press stop. And then all of a sudden the tracks run out. Now, with a full band, that might not be a big problem because it's just additional production tracks. Uh, but if you're performing as a trio, uh, then all of a sudden, you know, half the bottom is out. And you know, I had that happen in Florida on the show, a trio show. Oliver on percussion, Clydean keyboards, myself on guitar. Bass and drums was coming from the computer. And uh, I was just running into the chorus and, and pressed the button to go to go to the next section. And whoop, <laughs> all the drums and bass were gone. So in that case, I just went instantly to, okay, breakdown, and got everybody into an a cappella version of the chorus, got the audience to sing along, and, and you know, ended the song that way. Um, you just got to roll with the punches when that something happens. Don't let that throw you off. You, you know, you got to keep on playing and, um, and, and, and react to it. You know, stuff can happen. You just got to, you know, uh, keep going on. Um, it's also, it is a computer, so um, it could also break, it fell off the stage, happened to me once, you know, so pre prepared to do without. I also forgot it, I forgot cables, you know, so the better you're prepared, make sure you have all the cables, the MIDI, the foot switch and your gig bag, um, the better, the better uh, it is for you. Um, a technical glitch that I encountered once in a while is that um, the little AIC MIDI notes, which at the beginning of the song that's supposed to advance the song, uh, advance the first loop um, automatically, somehow didn't catch and it stayed in the first loop. So always I keep an eye on and you know, make sure it really jumps. And if it doesn't, I can still do it with a foot switch. Um, if I happen, if that happens during sound check, and I notice that the thing that the fix is to um, just go through that um, uh, key command one more time and, and just program it one more time, and it usually fixes it. So you want to have that down. How to do that without having to refer back to a manual? The whole thing is about feeling comfortable with it. You know, you don't want this to take away from your performance. You want to be so confident that you can easily do that. So um, practice that. Make sure you know how to do these things. And um, one another thing I had uh, happen to me is uh, once the uh, computer just died because it was too hot outside. Uh, I happened to have a black laptop. Stupid me, I had to get the black Mac at that time because it was cool. And in Las Vegas on a show, <laughs> we played like at one or at noon. You, you just couldn't take it and just died off on stage. So we did it without it. You know, that's that's how it goes. Also, um, sometimes on outdoor festivals, or outdoor occasions, you want to make sure that you can see the screen. Sometimes with the way the sun stands, it's really hard to see what's going on on the screen. And that can be a problem. It's definitely be good to have a non-glare screen or have some kind of like a shade cover so you can you can look at at the computer make sure it's all uh, where it's supposed to be one more thing i remembered is to watch out for that if something happens and the sequence stops or the computer stops you can't get back in within the same song um in tempo uh, in other words if, if it stops you gotta 
just finish the song without it. Don't even try to, to jump back in. It's never gonna work. Um, and, um, you know, uh, because, you know, a drummer's not gonna get the beat in, 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 in sync with where you're at if you don't play along with it. There's another situation though. You don't have to use the computer tracks all the way through on every song. So there's a, a couple songs we have in the set where we play half a song without any computer tracks. And then there's, and then they bring them in. The way to do it is to create almost like a fermata hold, um, like a rubato section, you know, where there's no time and then I press the button and that gives the drummer time to count in and, and then we're playing tempo. The same way the other way around, we could have music up front um, with the production tracks and then maybe it goes into a free drum solo or something where we don't want to be locked in into a certain tempo. Sometimes it's a short drum solo, I keep the click going and the drummer just, you know, solos against the click. Uh, if it's a good drummer, he can do that. Um, but if it's like a, a section where you want to give them more freedom, where they can slow down, speed up and, and do some crazy stuff and expand it a little bit, you need to take the computer out. Now, again, to get back into it, you need to create a certain introduction. Basically, he could come out of a drum or percussion solo, whatever the, 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 the section might be, that's without the click. And then there needs to be an area where, where you have almost a fermata, where you have a hold note and, and, and you get the sign from the player and, and press the button, they get the count off and start it back on. Um, so those are the tricks how you can get in and out of the sequences and, and be creative, not have every song being top to bottom for production tracks. So sometimes it's more interesting to have that contrast to, to just to give it that extra lift. That's what it really meant for. Of course, it's different if you're a solo performer and that's all, that's the, the computer's the whole band or if you're playing as a duo and trio or something like that. Um, but even there you can have some instrumental sections and then bring it in halfway through so so you can figure out ways like that to uh, keep it interesting you know not as predictable anyways that's all I have for now um, if you have any other ideas any other questions as I said leave comments below and um, I'll try to answer them or maybe do another add-on just to um, uh, complete the series. Okay, um, have fun with it. Follow me on Facebook and on um, YouTube uh, or on the Niels guitar and I see you on the road. Bye. This is Niels checking out. Yeah.